Good morning, Mission Control. It is, it is just an absolutely gorgeous morning. I wish you could be here to kind of feel it. It just, it feels amazing. The air is brisk. Uh, it's about 48 degrees Fahrenheit this morning when we woke up. Nice and brisk. Uh, but you come outside and the sun is coming up. And on one side of your body, you kind of got this briskness, and on your skin, you feel it. But then the sun is just there to to warm you, and it's just. A beautiful, quiet, still morning here. Uh, just, I, I can't, words can't do it justice, really. Uh, just really fantastic, though, to wake up to. Got my coffee in me. Got some work to do. I'm a little tired. Uh, and the reason I'm tired is it's heating installation time. And last night, actually, just two nights ago now, uh, I was up till 2 a.m. I had to dig this trench. Let me show you. Yeah, I had to dig from here. Oh the way over to the new tanks. And one of the major problems was in the ground was all that rock. <laughs> We've got some serious heat, man. Uh, it's not fully connected yet. Uh, I came home yesterday from work, so I got the trench dug there two nights ago, and I was just exhausted yesterday, and I came home, and it was so cool to come home and see those tanks in, we got propane lying in the ground, and we got this bad boy hanging up here, so it's pointed into the building here, I am so totally excited about this, uh, it's going to be fantastic, so yeah, uh, 300,000 BTUs of heat can come off of this thing. And I'll be honest, when I looked at the pictures and everything, I was thinking of a unit that was kind of like, like yay big. But man, this thing is like the size of a heat pump outside of your house. I am so excited about it. Uh, it is awesome. It's a Resnor V3 T-Core 2. Let me show you. This thing is so awesome. I can't wait to turn it on for the first time. go so obviously I'm pretty excited about this uh, new heater uh, and it was okay that we get it installed now even though we don't have insulation insulation is going to go around all this uh, so that was no that didn't hurt my head at all as far as sequence of events go but, you know, right now, the good news is, is even if by chance we weren't able to get the insulation in, uh, let, let's say, like the world ended today and all ordering stopped, with the propane that we have and this, we could actually keep this building above freezing. Uh, it wouldn't be like warm, warm, but it'd be above freezing. So that's a nice, um, I'm not saying that this could heat the building sustainably without insulation. What I'm saying is it's a nice stress relief seeing this thing come in just brings that stress level down because we're getting closer and closer and closer to being done and knowing that we're actually going to be able to not just survive but thrive uh, this winter. So that's, that's really exciting. Uh, I have emails in uh, to the supplier of the building, manufacturer of the building, and they've replied already that the initial estimate to reskin the building is going to be about $2,400, which uh, I'm thinking that's almost a no-brainer at this point is we need to reskin the building. Um, they say it takes 10 days for them to build it, uh, to weave it all together, to sew it, and then uh, probably I'm guessing another, what, 10 days uh, worth of shipping across the pond. And they owe me an estimate of shipping costs. Uh, hopefully I don't have to deal with import because it's a small, small item, relatively speaking. Like when I bought the building, you actually have to go through a freight forwarder. Uh, that's someone, if you've never imported anything before, it's a few extra steps. It's not like UPS where you just order things, you know, and it shows up at your door. Um, when you have to go through freight forwarding, you have to work with the shipper and you have to work with another company. The shipper sends this stuff to the freight forwarder who then takes it out of ex or, uh, the import of the U.S. Customs. The freight forwarder goes and grabs it out of uh, Customs and then has it ready for you to come pick up or they deliver it to you. So there's this extra step in between. And when I got the building, there, it was so big, the freight was so big, you had to do that. With the fabric, 
uh, it'll come in a box about the size of the heater actually is what it'll come in and I'm hoping that they can just uh, work directly with the freight forwarder get through import and ship it here um, so without having to have me do all that work so uh, yeah we're looking at about a month uh, essentially 20 days a little bit longer to get the fabric built and sent and then what that means is that that section right there will now be clear uh, sewn everything I, I won't be doing anything I won't be cutting in any fabric it'll all be from the factory sewn and built which will allow a lot more light in and a lot more heat in the winter which is a huge victory but the whack-a-mole right so yay more light more heat bam something else pops up any guesses that's right summertime gonna be a lot hotter in here so my initial go-to is the same thing that every greenhouse place has uh, and that is uh, the uh, shade covers so we can just get a shade cover which are very light very easy uh, to install and put that up over it in the uh, the summertime and then we'll have ventilation as well so remember in our back pocket if things start working out the way that we hope, we'll actually have the geothermal uh, system that we'll want to install as well. That'll give us cooling um, that we'll, we'll need to maintain the temperature in this building. And then if we get the blackout insulation all the way on the north side and then right up there and then on both ends, uh, essentially what would that be? That would be three quarters of the building. Yeah, I'd say about three quarters of the building will be completely insulated with R19 fiberglass insulation, not like anything special, no space age, nothing, just rudimentary, basic, simple fiberglass insulation. Now, uh, rodents are kind of a concern, so I have reached out to a few different trap companies, uh, and I have some traps coming that I want to test out and see how we can do as far as uh, kind of keeping the rodent control. Uh, squirrels, mice, voles, which are like moles, only they're more above ground. Uh, and uh, just kind of keeping them all under control. So I'm excited to see those traps show up. And also when we install the insulation, I'm gonna make sure that it can't touch the ground. That way, something would literally have to like crawl up a vertical pipe in order to get to it, which those little things can, but uh, we'll see. So uh, minus the rodent problem, uh, I think we have our solution. Uh, it's just a matter of getting it here de-skinning the building, reskinning the building, which we can do in a day, uh, but I'm gonna need some help to do that. So it's not gonna be a single Martian job. Uh, we'll need the Martian minions and then some. Uh, we'll need manly Martian minions. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, what do I got today? So automation is kind of bugging me. Uh, it's showing you just kind of an update on that. Uh, the relays, or I'm sorry, the power regulators that I got, I think they're cheap and they're popping on me. They're just uh, I've had other ones that don't do that, but, and I have one in the batch that's not doing it at all, but I had another regulator pop the other night. Um, so I'm gonna take out its board and double check it, make sure I didn't have any soldering problems and get that fixed. And then I got some kick plates to fix. And I have, these guys are coming back today to finish the installation of the propane. I need to wire it, so I need to do that today. Oh, and I'm also going to have them put a T in for the generator. We're going to convert my generator over to propane. So if the power does go out out here, the generator will be connected to the propane tanks, and we can run that. Uh, so I'm excited to have that done. And we're just going to put a T in the main supply line so that can happen. And uh, I'm supposed to go get uh, I'm supposed to go get the fabric for the road today. Uh, the geotech, G-O-T-K, I call it geotech, uh, fabric, it goes down on the ground directly, and then you put your rock on top of that. Uh, that was a subscriber recommendation. Thank you for that. Uh, so I got to go get that. And then uh, in about two weeks, we'll be building the road and getting that put in. And then I just really got to get this insulation thing figured out and, and bought so that it's actually kind of coming. So uh, that's, that's where we're at right now. Uh, all in all, a pretty good place. And seeing these propane tanks here and uh, the trench is that took me all night to dig is now filled back in just one day later. Really frustrating. <laughs> and seeing that bad boy up there is so awesome. So.